In the previous episode of Canon Think Big, I spoke to Brian Chu, founder of The Smart Local, on the challenges of starting an online business. In this episode, we take a look at how to grow your online business and what it takes to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vivian Sung, and you're watching Canon Think Big. Thank you, Brian, for joining us again. Now, as the founder of an online business like The Smart Local, where you don't get to see your customers, how do you collect information about them to continue to stay relevant and serve them better? There are actually quite a few number of tools available for webmasters to use, and these tools give webmasters information about their readers. One of the best, absolute best tools to use is Google Analytics. So Google Analytics gives you insight into who your readers are, um, what their interests are, what countries they come from, how long they spend reading a specific article. It gives you all this data for free, basically which is a good thing because you don't spend more money. Google Analytics has been very helpful to us. And sometimes when we look at this data, it also helps us plan our editorial calendar. If an article responds well, we will most likely try and create similar articles around that theme because we realize that there's a demand for it. There are readers who want to read these articles. And we keep that in mind when we generate ideas in our editorial calendar. How do you tell when a business has grown from its infancy into becoming a stable business? I believe a business has reached a stable stage when it's able to consistently generate income. So say over a period of six months, that's a pretty reasonable time frame. And when it does look like this pattern is going to continue for the foreseeable future, that's when you have a solid, sustainable, profit-generating business. Does it take a specific type of person to succeed as an entrepreneur? Uh, yes, I think for entrepreneurs to succeed, one really important skill to have is good judgement. So, good judgement is, is essential right at the very start of the company because before you even build a company, you need to have a good idea on what will work, whether there's a market for it in the first place and it's not viable. But you need to possess good judgement in basically all stages of the development of your company from the hiring process. You need to find good people to work for you and judgement plays an important part there as well. As well as when you plan the strategic vision of your company, you need to have good judgement so that you know what will work and what will not work. As well as a lot of micro decisions as well, they require lots of good judgement. So like basically if you have good judgement, you make the perfect decision every time and if you make the perfect decision every time your company will succeed. Yeah, and this judgement is gained mostly through experience, I believe. So it's the people who have been like roughing it out, who have like maybe failed at some startups before, but have pushed themselves and went on to succeed. I wouldn't say they succeeded purely because they had a never give up attitude, but more, more because they're now experienced and therefore they are able to make a better decision. As an entrepreneur, I believe you also have to have a very innovative mindset. You have to keep yourself updated with the latest trends, the latest changes and have a very proactive approach to learning because basically that's how startups or like new companies compete with existing companies which have a huge advantage, a huge market share, a huge monopoly, right? Um, they have to come up with something new, like a disruption, a game changer that brings something new to the table and you only do this through innovation. As an entrepreneur, you should be at the forefront of innovation. You should be always incorporating new methodologies in your work process, new practices, uh, lots of new habits which, which you learn through proactive learning. You should not ever fall behind because that's where your advantage is over the other companies which exist and which are large in size. Now that the business is taking off, and earlier you mentioned that there was possibility the smart local might expand into overseas markets. Can you share what are the possible challenges in expansion? Yes, I do foresee challenges, especially since we've not entered a Caucasian market before. Actually, I'm really looking forward to expand to, say, Australia, because uh, Westerners are quite different than Asians in the sense that they are way more vocal. If you look at reviews or even forums and compare the Singapore ones to the ones in America or the international ones, you will see a big difference in quality and also the level of involvement. Like Westerners are just way more vocal. They like to have their opinions heard. They also take the time to review a place if it has done well for them and share it, whereas Singaporeans, they kind of just 
want to complain when things don't go well for them and when a place goes well for them, they, they don't really say anything. So does that mean you think it would be easier to actually expand into the foreign Caucasian market where people are more vocal and more willing to supply reviews? Yes, I actually think it's going to be easier, but it's going to be a challenge because I have to set up a team from scratch in a different market and then build it up from there. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, so the way the Smart Local is built is that it's not as scalable as, say, TripAdvisor or Yelp, where people can just generate reviews and you can depend on their existing base. For hours, we have to build up popularity in a different market first and then populate the reviews. But that's really the only way to do it if you want to have local reviews. So in the long run, I do think that it is worth the effort to create a better product by spending more time, but also getting far more accurate reviews. What's the next step for the Smart Loco? Can you share with us some of the exciting developments that we can look forward to? So we just started a video team division. And basically, we want to push our video channel and pick up a lot of subscribers. And so we can have a another big platform to offer to advertisers. We really have a very strong web presence, but I'm trying to build a new media company of the future. And I believe video is a big part of new media. And I definitely want to incorporate that in our advertising packages, as well as create content. So that's why we've currently dedicated quite a bit of resources to building up our video channel. Does the Smart Local have a mobile application at present? So at this point of time, we don't have a mobile app. And that's because there isn't really an urgent need to create a mobile app because people can still view our site on their mobile phones. The site is mobile friendly and responsive. And it's also because my mentor, Rini Lauria, actually advised me not to go ahead with the mobile app at the moment because the market was just too saturated. And I completely agree with him and we've been using the funding we've received to actually develop our web infrastructure to make it a better web experience for our readers. So you have a mentor. Tell us more about him. So I actually found my mentor, Vinny Lauria, from an uh, incubator program. And Vinny liked the concept of our, our portal and decided to come on board and mentor me. So I've been very fortunate to have uh, his guidance because Vinny is someone who has mentored like, thousands of startups. He instantly knows what works and what doesn't, how to make things better. And as a startup, this experience was invaluable for me. What are your thoughts of Canon's idea of thinking big? When I hear the phrase, think big, I think of looking at the big picture. So for example, if I'm a company, I don't just want to be a company that makes money, but rather a company that also adds value to the world. Uh, I think it's important to create companies like that, especially in Singapore, because we have to remain globally competitive. So the onus is on us Singaporean entrepreneurs to create innovative companies that do add value to people's lives, that do add value to the world. And to me, that's what Think Big means. Thank you, Brian, for sharing all your insights with us. I do agree that a company should seek to add value to people's lives. And on that note, we've come to the end of this episode. Thank you for watching Canon Think Big.